You're listening to SMSF Connect podcast on iRadio Live that brings you programs covering a variety of genres under development. Welcome back and in this part 2 of our episode of Let's Connect with Garba Diallo, we continue our conversation and know more about the work of Crossing Border directly through its founder and director. You uh, you know shared a lot about how you bringing youth to your offices through different uh, you know means mechanisms someone are coming for the different programs which you call them. So uh, for the interest of our listeners are they uh, on invitation basis do they apply as interns what is the way that you can get connected with you okay very interesting i mean first what we used to run a school actually where a uh, student from all over the world including india came to study for 6 months okay and this is non formal non academic education they come because they want to come and when they come they have a a variety of subject to choose from mm-hmm. they tailor their own uh, you know curriculum uh and then they 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 study together with other people and they live together 24 hours actually they keep on learning 24 hours what is, what age group they, comes to you minimum of 18 minimum 18 till and no maximum i have 18 people 8 years old 90 years old former wow. lawyer <laughs> wow because they, It's about lifelong learning. Yes, so interesting. You come because you want to come, and you pay for it uh, actually, uh, <laughs> and you stay because you want to stay, and you learn twenty four hours together with others okay. by work, by working together, by facilitating, by debating, by you know entering into a dialogue. Interesting. So it's a special colleges. It's called the uh, uh, you know people's colleges. Okay, and this is self paid. The self paid self it's subsidized by the Danish government because they appreciate and they understand and appreciate the value of this you know because you go there you learn you know this uh, personal development mm. i have had many people like for for example i've had more than 65 youth leaders from mm. the amc youth league in south africa mm. uh, many of them found out actually they were interested in something else okay you know i also have uh, you know people from afghanistan who ended up saying okay they become filmmakers instead of uh, they were supposed to be uh, medical doctors <laughs> because the parents send them oh you have to be you know to study medicine <laughs> okay. or uh, many people from the middle east who are supposed to be lawyers they end up doing something else oh, wow. they become journalists and vice versa because it gives you a space to reflect and find out uh, what you are good at what yes. you are interested in. yes So it's very very interesting, and that's our teaching and facilitation now also is based on that. But then the people who come to crossing borders, they come individually, they apply as mm-hmm. intern. Mm-hmm. Many of them uh, come through different universities that we partnership through the Erasmus uh, uh, program, inter- young entrepreneurship program, mm-hmm. and now we have several coming through the Italian Chamber of, of Commerce in Denmark. interesting okay. so so all kind of people and then also sometimes through our project coming from Ghana or from uh, Kenya or from other countries uh, you know who are also involved in our project that's interesting yeah. yeah it's a matter of coming not for the certificate but coming for learning to live to work and collaborate with other people and uh, for our uh, youth and the young uh, audience and listeners Uh, I'm sure this could be a life-changing experience. Life-changing, yeah, yeah. life-changing. It's a life-changing life-changing. experience. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's shift uh, the focus of our conversation to our specific initiative now. Uh, okay. Uh, women empowerment in local development in India. So, which is implemented in partnership with Segal Foundation and Crossing Border. Uh, So what is in your opinion uh, has been the biggest success of this project now we are in the phase 2 so almost been 3 years that uh, you know this project is ongoing phase 1 was i think for 1 year and now phase 2 which is uh, the 2 year project what's been your experience of this partnership project 
I think we have to start with ourselves. We learned a lot <laughs> from mm. you. That's one thing. The other thing is that we seen women start to talk. Mm. Uh, start to talk, you know, with, uh, you know, head up and then open eyes. Yes. And they start to bring their uh, daughters. And also they start to bring their husband <laughs> to listen to, to them. Yeah. Because uh, the husband used to be, you know, just uh, somewhere because they supposed to know everything. Yes. But now they bring them. And then also focusing on the most important things. The whole world is talking about sustainability. Mm. Mm. Water, water is life. Mm. You know, agriculture is life. Mm. And in terms of development, the only development is actually the local development. Yeah. It's not in the, you know, going to the moon or anything, but the local people in their local area, mm. their local self-confidence and dignity, and the, to live with their land because we have nothing more than the land we have, the planet. You know, there is a, uh, there are some slogans saying that we have only one, one Earth. There are not many planets. Yes. We have not, despite yeah. all, all the exploration and the, the, uh, the smart guys in Bengal, it's not, <laughs> you have not found any other planet where we can move to. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. to take care of this. And they also, the other slogan is that we have not, uh, inherited uh, this land, uh, the earth, from our parents, but we borrowed it from our kids. Kids, yes. And people yes. are supposed to love their kids and grandkids, so we should hand it back, you know, in the best Better possible way. way. Oh, right. Yeah. And the, yeah, the other thing is all over. I mean, actually, it's, uh, it's just basic, you know, development is local. Mm. And after that, it can be global. True. And yeah. then you yeah. are in the countryside working with, I don't know, thousands of uh, villages. villages yes. All the product in the world comes from the villages, mm. from the countryside. Mm. The cities are the, what you call, if you compare the cities and the, and the countryside is like uh, low cost. <laughs> you know, the cities are low cost. Mm. You know, you just grab and eat everything and pollute and throw away. Mm -hmm. Whereas the, the countryside are the bees that pollinate mm. and pollute and sustain everything. Yeah. And a very interesting thing that uh, I have seen in this project, uh, particularly uh, in the women, uh, you know, a school and the, where the capacity building happens, is uh, the way the games are devised. So interesting games of, uh, you know, Ludo and uh, Snake and Ladder has been redesigned to fit a concept which teaches them whether it was on nutrition, on uh, the empowerment index. So uh, it was very interesting and uh, with a lot of uh, interest and curiosity how women used to learn because a simple game like Ludo or Snake and Ladder also they haven't uh, get exposure to that ever. So learning uh, in a very different way through a, through game methodology of utilizing games uh, was uh, very interesting when I visited one of the uh, centers. So, yeah, definitely so interesting because also learning should be fun. Mm, absolutely. You know, yes. uh, the, the women in the countryside or villagers, they don't have the luxury to go and sit there and listen to a sermon. Yeah, yes. It has to be active, fun, you know, where they also yeah. showcase their uh, their skills their skills and uh, yes so it, it, it's absolutely important and then games are so important we, we had uh, yesterday i was attending a general assembly online from nigeria they were using games they have mm -hmm. this uh, uh, you know teach the child focusing on sdg number four quality okay. education yes quality education. that's what we need quality education should be also connected to the reality it should be a school in reality not mm. school in based on uh, latin or some old thing that nobody is using you know mm. uh, yeah so absolutely i mean but we are learning actually i think we are learning more from you than the other way around really and that's all respect and uh, you know gratefulness that we, we collaborate with you yeah so it is mutual because you uh Crossing Border is taking, making this thing what we call the global. So a very local issue is becoming a global in nature. And uh, we thank uh, Crossing Borders for that, to take it to that level. 
So, uh, so yes, empowerment is a term we hear a lot today, whether yeah. in our projects and uh, at other places also. From, from your perspective, what are the key milestones in the ep- empowerment journey of a woman? I think the, the fact that they start to participate, mm-hmm. they start to take leadership, especially the school, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, and, and then also the meetings. Yeah. Uh, they start to take the time to go to the meetings because they have something to bring at the, to the table. Yes. And they have a seat at the table. Mm. I think these are milestones. And they, of course, this is a very small project considering, I mean, <laughs> just India or the whole world. I mean, this is a small uh, thing, but then also the small drops, uh, you know, make the ocean at the end. Uh, but the other thing is actually we are trying to, we are about to develop a project in Nepal inspired by uh, the Women Empowerment Project in uh, in Bihar, in India. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's also a milestone, and then mm-hmm. uh, many of our people have never actually been to mm-hmm. India, except maybe they, they thought about going there, you know, to take photos, you know, to go to Taj Mahal. So this is also a, it's a milestone that we, yeah. our connection, our partnership, our sharing of knowledge and experiences, and the, and the, and the also. I was thinking actually about your uh, the project the way they wrote it because most of the things are in our project actually we say is that the partners have to develop the concept. Mm-hmm. Maybe we have something to give feedback and discuss back and forth. Absolutely. But the first concept are the, the the partners who are doing it because we are not a colonial organization where we design things and go and uh, copy and, and impose on uh, our partners. We cannot do right. that. Right. Yeah. And also most of our people are coming from there. I mean, mm. our administrator, uh, administrator now, and then the one who started uh, uh, the project before, you know, they are Indians. They know. Mm. They know. So we, we, we use the local people uh, in our organization to connect with their countries and the partners mm. from there. So that's also the local it's a respect of the local knowledge. And local reality. I mean, the one who feels, it, who carries it, is the one who feels it. You know, mm. they, they know. Mm. They come from there. They know the culture. They know how to, uh, you know, connect, communicate, and deal with the people. Mm. You know, mm. not one jacket fits all. You know. Yes. Interesting and deep. <laughs> yes, Thank indeed. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, a special message for our podcast listeners that you would like to share. Yes, I, I think the first message is together we can do it better. Yes. As human beings in a globalized world, we cannot do it alone. Mm-hmm. It, we can maybe can do it alone, but not as good as we pull together for the same goal, based on collaboration. And to collaborate also we need to organize Absolutely. at the local level. Without organization, uh, Individually, I cannot do much, mm-hmm. but together with other people, with the same, uh, you know, to organize around common issues, common interests, and common challenges, to pull together toward common goals, which is actually life based on equal partnership, that everyone is valued, that we have to, uh, you know, that everyone have has piece of the truth. It's like when you are building a Lego mm-hmm. <laughs> castle, and if someone uh, you know doesn't put their uh, piece, piece then yeah. there is a gap. Mm-hmm. So everyone has something. Yeah. Not a single one person has everything. So as human beings, we are social beings. We need to collaborate, and we have common interest. At the end of the day, our lives, the interests are connected. Therefore, we should work together. And I think it's so important that uh, we, we collaborate and then focus on youth because they are the leaders of today mm-hmm. and tomorrow. They are the majority and they are not, the, what do you say, they are not the, the one who, who are causing the problems, but they are paying the price you know, of all the conflict and the pollution that's made by all people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then women also, you know, 
think about in Africa, we say, uh, you know, we say uh, Mama Africa. In in, uh, in Latin America, the indigenous people uh, call it Pachamama. Mm. So everywhere we need that. I'm sure if you go to, you know, read about Hindu, also all the other aspects of life, mountains, animals, we are all connected to a body called Mother Earth, which is the only planet we have. So it's, it's so important that we connect. And then if you go to Buddhism, everything is connected. It's not a pyramid, you know, where you have a little bit, you know, minority up, but holding all the power. It should be, the pyramid should be put upside down so that the majority should have more power than, than the few on the top of the pyramid. So that's my message. And I, I also thank you so much for our partnership and our, you know, mutual learning and mutual exchange. Thank you. Indeed, a very, very powerful message. Uh, and thank you, Garba, uh, for joining us today and sharing your insights. It's been a pleasure having you on the podcast. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pooja. Thank you for being with us. Stay tuned for more. You can also listen to these podcasts on Spotify, Apple and Google.